Take it with you. Play us in the play. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I'll, uh, so we have no public hearing tonight. I'll call the regular meeting to order. Mr. Helms, you look like you're about to say. We need to amend the agenda to add another item to the closed meeting. Okay. Or, Do we have that or possible litigation. Show the camera. Yeah. Henry got it. Okay. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. Second. That'll be item number three, Mr. Hillis. Mm -hmm. Under closed meeting, yes, Jeff. Okay. Madam Clerk? Yes, sir. Councilman Bishop? Aye. Councilman Collins? Aye. Councilman Hall? Aye. Councilman Showalter? Aye. Councilman Stipes? Aye. I believe that to be 5 0 with Mr. Hubbard bicycling across Holland as we speak. So. Uh, first thing on the agenda is our consent agenda. The only thing I'm showing is the <coughs> approval of council minutes from April the 26th. So move we approve the consent agenda. Second. Move and second. Any discussion? Hearing none, Madam Clerk. Yes, sir. Councilman Bishop? Aye. Councilman Collins? Aye. Councilman Hall? Aye. Councilman Showalter? Aye. Councilman Stipes? Aye. I believe that to be 5-0. Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> citizens' hearings, we have Dale Buckner to address council regarding a gospel singing event. Dale, welcome back. Thank you. Good evening. Thanks for having me. Um, well, you know what happened last year? We want to do it again this year, so coming to ask your approval for... Uh, the fest, the gospel singing festival downtown, and closure of the street, exactly everything, just like it was. Um, we've already turned in our grant application and the application and the fees that I mean <laughs> you didn't know about <laughs> application fees to turn into the town. Uh, all that's been done. I did check the date. It would be the same weekend. It's August the twenty seventh. <clears throat> I think it was a success for the town. Wholesome family gatherings. I think some of you are there. I don't, but hopefully this year maybe all of you can get there. Um, same structure, same everything. Identical. Just a good time for downtown. Um, I will make <clears throat> I will make it uh, make sure that we go by the businesses. It's on Saturday, same times, five to nine. I asked that we close the street at three o'clock so we get the everything set up. We'll go by the businesses to make sure there's not a conflict uh, of interest for their businesses downtown. And that's basically it. Same kind of street closure, same areas, everything I did. So I really appreciate you working with us last year. We hope to do it again this year. Dale, what's the date on that? Is it August? August the 27th. Yes. Dale, any preliminary number as to how many you think uh, attended last year? Based on our count and based on some of you guys got some kind of count. We were in between 11 and 1500, somewhere like that. And that was the first time I think it was really great uh, number for the first time event. So I hope to be more. I'll tell you, we, I, I can't speak for all of us, but I heard nothing but compliments. I think we talked about that last year. Went very, very well and very heavily attended by not just Christianburg, but all throughout. Uh, particular groups this year, if you all looked into who's going to be on the, uh, the rotation, because last year was also was very, was wonderful the way it was, from what I understand, is one was on, one, the other one was up. It was, it was back and forth. There was no stale period whatsoever. Yeah, I tried to make that as smooth as possible. Mm -hmm. And everybody ready as one comes off, getting up, setting up, so there's no downtime. <clears throat> It actually went too smooth because we pushed everybody through and still had time. So everybody's like, "You quit, you quit," and it's like, "Well, already, you know, it already." We ran everybody, so I didn't want to start over because then you got to give everybody a little bit more time. But that was a learning experience, and I know how to handle that now. So have you, are you all have your groups ready to go this year? I have, or the uh, ones that you would look to ask, I guess. I have five. I'm looking for one more. 
Um, so yeah, I got I got pretty much everything planned out, you know, already. Um, so it's 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 good. And as far as the approval process, um, let me ask me how quickly are you looking for us to look to discuss whether or not we are going to approve it? How quickly are you looking for a decision on that? Oh, just whenever. I mean, there's no pressing I, time. No, there's no pressing time. Okay. There's no pressing time. Um, I did uh, I did check it with Charlton at the break center. The date is open, so I don't think there's a conflict there. I think everything's good, so we just look for your approval. Any kind of food trucks or things yes. to drink or food trucks just like last year. Every, yes. Everything's identical. I think we have four that's already committed uh, food trucks. So I don't want to get too many because I like for who does come to get a lot of business. So it helps them out. Yeah. And Mr. Mayor, I would ask I know Chief Sisson's present, mm -hmm. but uh, I'm not aware of any issues we had last year. But if we could ask Chief if there were any, none at all. Yeah. All right. Okay. And we will. Uh, provide the seats just like we did for folks to sit as well. Very good. That's all I have. Very good. Anybody want to move that down into the agenda? To I'd make a motion that we move up the uh, request to um, host the gospel singing event on Main Street with the street closures as requested by Mr. Buckner for August 27th uh, from 5 to 9 p.m. I'll second. Motion and second. Any discussion? Yes, sir. Councilman Bishop. Aye. Councilman Collins. Aye. Councilman Hall. Aye. Councilman Showalter. Aye. Councilman Stipes. Aye. That will be item 7A in discussion by Mayor and Council. <clears throat> Thank you, Dale. Thank you. We look Appreciate forward to another great event. Thank you. Okay. This is our citizens' comment portion of the hearing where we open the floor to <coughs> citizens who may want to discuss items of issue, concern, or anything there within. We ask that you uh, uh, limit your, your speech to, sit to five minutes, mm -hmm. and if you want to come to the podium, that's fine, but if you'll stand and, and give us your name and your address, we'll proceed from there. Is there anyone here who would like to address council? Once, twice. So we'll close the public hearing, the citizens' hearing. Uh, staff reports. Uh, I got my wires calls. This is for next meeting. Okay. We'll just move on. <laughs> Under discussion by mayor and council members, the first item is the ordinance amendment chapter 36, utilities of the town, Christiansburg Town Code, in regards to establishing a stormwater utility and system of stormwater utility fees. Council will take action on the ordinance <coughs> and the fee schedule when it votes on the annual budget for fiscal year 2016-2017. Any updates? Well, it's basically if y'all had any comments after the public hearing or um, want the engineering department to make any considerations before we put the final draft out, or final <coughs> recommended ordinance out. Okay. Uh, this was one committee. Uh, this was one committee. I think we did an outstanding job at including uh, vested parties, <clears throat> and I think the process has been fair and thorough. And I think people recognize the benefit of what we're trying to accomplish here. We have seven or eight active projects right now that are stormwater related, and <clears throat> I think that this is. I think the uh, ordinance, as is written, as like I said, has been fair and thorough and has had the uh, appropriate input, <clears throat> and I intend to support it as it is. And Mr. Stipes, I, I'll, I'll second exactly what you just said, and I, I did <coughs> like the fact that um, I thought that Mr. Nelson, I, I saw him earlier, and, and, and other staff members that were involved in this project did a fantastic job because it is something that's very difficult to understand, still something very difficult to understand, but you all made it uh, at least broken down in digestible elements for me, which is saying something. Um, but also, I like the fact that part of the committee, I think Brad alluded to this, is that we had a good cross-section across the town of uh, property owners, business owners, and I, I like the fact that we had a lot of diverse opinions going into this. So uh, it made for a very, I think, dynamic group and an extremely well-written um, uh, amendment, ordinance amending this, uh, this chapter. So again, I will also be looking to support it. I thank you for all your hard work on that. And uh, I think, Cord, you and I attended the work session yes. that they had. 
and it was well attended. It was compared to most of our, at least our work sessions. So there's a lot of input. It's not saying too much, though. Yeah. <laughs> so there was a lot of input, and, and they did, you know, they did a great job of, you know, listening and explaining what's going on. So it was a that was a great um, work session that we went to. It was lengthy. Good attendance. I think the only possible there's a little bit of notification. <clears throat> Change that you're gonna gonna do. Yes, yes, it is. There also is flyer in there. It'll be going out with the next flyer bill. And if you have any comments on that, we can still make changes before it goes to the printers. Okay. Very good. Discussion regarding a moment of silence, Councilman Collins. Okay, so can I ask Mr. Hill one of the things? So you're saying that I'm Captain Altizer. I will not be here tonight to talk about the toy. It'll be the next meeting. Next meeting. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Okay, uh, what I want to discuss is a little bit uh, controversial in, in my mind that it should not be. Uh, when I was a child, uh, we had Upteen rights and privileges as a child as time has passed on and of course I'm old too so you know time changes things too but as time has uh, moved on uh, groups have come into this a uh, country and have slowly taken away uh, some of our rights and privileges and I think that um, uh, we don't say anything to these groups because we don't want to hurt their feelings we don't want to step on their toes but they're stepping all over our toes so i think it's time that we try to take some of our stuff from the back and just a small thing that i think would be in the right direction for us is to have before each meeting well not before each meeting before the pledge of allegiance is we have a silent prayer or the moment of silence and I think that would show our town, the children, the citizens of the town, a whole lot. Any discussion on this? I'll Any discussion on this? Yes, thank you. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll chime in. Um, <clears throat> frankly, I, I think I've talked to more than one member of council over the years about um, observing a moment of silence. It's, it's, mm -hmm. um, it, it's, and I don't call it anything more than that moment of silence. Mm -hmm. And that is that uh, we all are, are free for that one minute or however long we decide to to set that aside and um, and we uh, it can be a, again a time of remembrance it could be a time of just simply getting your thoughts in order and clearing one's mind before the meeting sometimes we get into some pretty uh, intense uh, discussions and debates um, I have no issue at all with the moment of silence being approved I have no issue at all with that being something we observe because we're not directing in any way anyone's actions or their feelings or their thoughts in, on behalf frankly we're just saying we're observing a moment of silence to be observed as one sees fit and because we keep it very um, um, clear and we don't uh, put any type of label. And again, there's no overtone, in other words. Uh, I frankly don't have an issue with it. Frankly, whether we have it or not doesn't prevent some of us, I think, from observing that internally ourselves anyway. But I have no issue with Mr. Collins' request pursuant to us, again, calling it a, a moment of silence uh, that we, uh, we could observe. So that's just my two cents on the matter. I'll make a few brief comments. Uh, I've given this some thought, and I appreciate the uh, thoughtfulness behind it and the intent. And I'll go ahead and say if the majority of council feels that that's appropriate, I will certainly support it. I guess my thought, uh, my summary thought is, if this was something that was a tradition, then I'd be far more interested in protecting that tradition than I would be in introducing something that, uh, as you say, uh, could send some wrong messages uh, in the community. Uh, I didn't prepare any thoughts for this, but I. I did want to say that if we were protecting a tradition, I would have a, diff a different view on this, uh, but I certainly uh, recognize the, the value of it, and uh, if the majority of council if it looks like things are going that direction, I'll certainly support it. I don't take exception with it. I just think it would be easier for me to support it if it was something we were protecting that we had been doing for a long time rather than... Uh, taking this approach, but I will support it if the majority of the council looks like that's going to happen. My feeling on this, I've talked to a, a couple of people about it, and I think the key point is we need to know our audience, number one, 
And also, when we use the moment of silence, what does that mean? Uh, like right now, we have two different versions. So once again, I guess it's going to be left up to the audience to decide what does this moment of silence mean? Are we pushing something on to the audience or not? So right now, I haven't made up my mind. To be honest with you. I, mean, I, I forgot one other comment, if I might make it. The other thought I had on this was, from time to time, this council does observe moments of silence that have a very clear intent. Uh, we had some tragedies in our community. Yes, we have. So my other thought was, if we have a regular moment of silence, it might take away from some of the ones that we have that are special. But that's a secondary thought. Since I didn't prepare my comments, that was the other thought I had. Is from time to time, we do recognize a moment of silence for a particular reason, and it has a lot of import when we do it. Oh, you want me? Uh, right. Yeah, I'm, I'm good either way. I'm, unless we're pushing to make a decision tonight, Harry, is that what you're looking for? Not I mean, I would like for not necessarily no. for council to be no, not necessarily full attendance, but sure. Yeah, I mean, personally, it's I think court said it best. It's it's not towards one specific thing. Sam made a good point. Is uh, perception? That's right. That's um, right. So I think we need to. Think about this and have council weigh in on it and actually have it's what the state comes back possibly you know get a council here I, I would like to suggest maybe in lieu of a moment of silence that maybe we have a moment of reflection i like it which you know kind of allows the audience to reflect mm -hmm. on whatever it is that, that they want to think about it gives us time uh so that uh and then at that, it would not take away if we had a moment of silence in honor of a of a, a tragedy or an event that we uh, we wanted to uh, particularly call attention to. So I would suggest considering when we make this move, uh, when we vote on this, and maybe we can vote on it next week sure. or next meeting. Next meeting, yeah. That we that we would call it a moment of reflection. Okay. Is that yes, sir? I was emailed uh, our council. Jim Gwynn, and he suggested that we get a briefing by council, either himself or someone who's been dealing with this, uh, before you take any action. <clears throat> a, a briefing in, in what manner? Of ramifications and the and I consideration. Mean, ramifications I don't know and considerations. Ramifications for silence. I mean, yeah. well, that was his recommendation. So, if you will, if that's all right, if you'll get with uh, council and. And uh, maybe we can set up a, a work session or a uh, time for a meeting that we can discuss this. I uh, do, and, and Mr. Collins brought out a good point. Uh, Board of Supervisors uh, here in the county observes that moment of silence, and I, I had a chance to talk with Craig Meadows yesterday morning about it, and uh, you know, he said that they have not had any problems, uh, I think, due to the way it is presented. So if that's something that we want to do. I'd still like to suggest we, we do the moment of, of, of reflection. So, uh, Mr. Helms, we, when you finish emailing yourself, would you? Yes, uh, sir. I'm, I'm to okay. Ken has been observing that for how long? I, I'm, I'm, not as long as, yeah, I'm, I, I'm not aware. I'm not aware. Several years, I guess. So, okay. All right. Very good. Thank y'all very much. So we'll. Barry will wait on you to find out from, from Jim if he wants to come or if he wants to send a, a written explanation or or whatever else. So, um, good. good. Do, do we? I mean, hey, I don't mean I don't. I'm not going to belabor this, but do we need a, an opinion, a legal opinion on that? It's observed throughout the Commonwealth in so many different uh, localities and different boards, chairs. I've even seen the VML them call it something other than a moment of silence. Um, going much further than what we're looking to do. Uh, to me, it looks like more semantics, and we're just late. We're just beating this horse. I, that was his recommendation. I passed okay. it on to you. Okay. I mean, it it's, does not does not have to be, and I think in the, in the way it's it's presented, it certainly leaves it open to interpretation by the by the members of the audience as to what they choose to reflect, if they choose to reflect, and counsel is the same. So. Uh, are we, are we looking at a work session or are no. we put it on the agenda? Uh, put it on the agenda. Yeah, I yeah, think. Yeah. Yes. 
And I, and I think one of the one of the comments that, that I heard was it is uncharted ground for us, and we have never done this before. And there's some some ramifications that could happen. Although I think this is a very generic suggestion, so we'll put it on the agenda to discuss and vote on next next meeting. <clears throat> All right, resolution for the renewal of the FY13 revenue sharing projects. The, uh, <clears throat> this is one of our initial revenue sharing uh, allocations. We received it uh, back in 2013. It will expire, and the agreement will expire in 2016. And we haven't spent all the money yet, and this we spent a good portion of it with the Brown Church and Lucas project. Storm drain project has not been completed yet, and this is to extend the agreement so we'll still have the money to work on those projects. That's basically the same agreement we had before, just to extend it for three more years. That's your recommendation? Yes, sir. To make a motion, we uh, extend for the renewal of the uh, VDOT revenue sharing projects that Mr. Helms has presented. Do you have a motion? Second, that motion. Motion on the second. Any discussion by council? Hearing none, Madam Clerk. Yes, sir. Councilman Bishop. Aye. Councilman Collins. Aye. Councilman Hall. Aye. Councilman Showalter. Aye. Councilman Stipes. Aye. Five zero. Thank you. Request regarding street closures from Food Truck Rodeo. This is a carryover item from April the twenty sixth, two thousand sixteen. I. Do not believe, very correct me if I'm wrong, the, <coughs> the committee that they apply to usually waits until we approve the, uh, the sale of the, of the, the closing of the streets and then they, they review the request and negotiate with them. Is that, that's, that's pretty much what, what we understood. Sometimes do it simultaneously, but this, this was far enough out that they can wait until after council approves it closure before they have to act on or make a recommendation. So would you like to show me what you got there, Mr. Okay. Hills? Okay. There we go. <laughs> so that's better. <laughs> All of us old bad eyes, Barry, we have trouble here, brother. I understand. I'm sitting way over here. <clears throat> the request is to close Main Street from just below the bank entrance up to Dunkley and Hickok Street on both sides. Okay. <coughs> and the food trucks will be along the green portion on Main Street. Uh, the band and stage will be in the parking lot there next to Hickok Street. And our call sales will be a, along Hickok Street where the farmer's market is. Similar to what they've done in the past. Uh, and what we did it Christmas after Christmas? No, the one before Christmas. They had the wine sales down here. Mm -hmm. Basically, the same thing we've been doing for several of the truck radios. Okay. And I think it's, if I'm not wrong, and David, if you'll correct me on it, uh, right around the entrance to Hickok Street is to, that's where the arm. Bands or the, the drink tickets will be sold? Uh, we typically set up our tent right at the intersection of Hickok and Main Street in the center of the center of your festival. So, you know, and you all have you all have a limit? You're going to have a limit of three yes. or four, whatever that we is. Do four. I don't think we've ever had any we never had any issues with Yeah. And and so they do have to prove identification, they have to have a ticket or an armband in order to go into that area. Yeah, they get an armband <coughs> for their ID and then they have to purchase tickets from us. So and I don't, so don't believe you allow them anyone under eighteen back there, is that I, I, um, I can't remember. Uh, no, I mean, there's no way to really control that. I mean so Well the uh, kids and families coming to the event. Right. Yeah. And I want to ask David something too, Mr. Mayor, if I may. Um, I asked uh, Dale the same thing, but in years past, uh, David, 
you know, if you can give us, because you actually keep a count of individuals who are buying tickets and who are present. We are. Um, and you sell shirts and things too as well. I have a few. Uh, how many um, uh, How many people do you approximate will be there at the Food Truck Radio, the one you're planning for this year? Um, our, there's no way to guess how many people. So I understand, but I mean, how many um, do you approximate? Um, last year was a little low attendance because of the weather, but um, we're guessing between five and 7,000 people. Um, so based on our estimates and the um, police department's estimates. So, um, and that's not, I don't think the whole five to seven are going to be there the whole night. But it'll no, be no, people will go and get their food and you know, hang out a little bit and look at it. Mm -hmm. So is it, uh, is it time to ask questions, Mayor, or not? Um, yeah, we since we're in discussion. Okay, um, the last meeting, uh, I asked on three separate occasions about uh, alcohol sales, which is sort of that must support on public property. But the closest I got was a maybe, but it, it's sounding like you're still proposing to sell it on Hickok Street? Correct. Okay, then is there any way we can separate the vote for closing the streets from the sale of alcohol on public property? I, I would recommend I would I would recommend that we do that because I'm on the food truck rodeo. I do have continue to have concerns about that on public property uh, right there. So okay. if council would oblige that, then uh, I would like to support the, the, the rodeo. In the May I address council? Uh, sure. Some uh, what what exactly are your concerns about? <clears throat> I mean, we haven't had any issues in the. In the Four or five food truck rodeos you have on It's a philosophical issue, Mr. Francis. Okay. Well, that's fine. I just want to. Yeah. Well, it is a slope that can get slippery very fast. We have already approved one event that's going to be down there that will have alcohol sales and they historically sell on Hickok Street. So if you set a precedent tonight, then we call the other people and say, sorry, you can't do it. I mean, we've, we've, we've set a precedent over the last 10 years because we've had events of some form or fashion <clears throat> dating back to the tech tech tailgate of eight years ago at least that was you know the the, the beer truck set up on <clears throat> at the head of uh, main street right where we right shy of, of uh, the bank <clears throat> people came there and they purchased their their alcohol and they were allowed to walk back to the staging area where the bands were performing so I, I, I don't know, and I think Chief Sisson, is he back there? No, Chief, yes, I, I, I'm not aware of any of any issues that we've ever had with, with any of these things. And I realize and I, I appreciate the philosophical uh, concern over it, but I think that one of the goals that we have as a council is, you know, one of the desires is we need to bring people downtown. And unfortunately, or fortunately, depending, you know, it's a way of life. If you're going to have a, a an event of the caliber of, of a food truck rodeo or a green egg cook-off and these type things, uh, you know, it's it's kind of a sign of the times people expect and want to be able to purchase an adult beverage and, and feel free to move within the confines, which they are confined, and I do know that the police has an active presence throughout the event. So, I mean, that's the, you know, I wonder if, if by separating this one and assuming we approve one and deny the other, then we need to go back and tell the uh, Wilderness Trail people, since they are going to sell alcohol on Hickok Street, uh, they can't do it. So now I think that they they do have a, the roped off area there, the the parking lot there at the old CVS pharmacy parking lot uh, is kind of more of a it's where you go with it. They're not allowed to run free free range, but that hall is sold off of Hickok Street. My impression was I thought that the museum was going to have their alcohol on private properties, and you know I put this up a couple of weeks back about the concern that I begin to have that our carbon is sold and consumed on town properties. As you say, yeah, we have set a standard more or less, but when do we stop, where do we stop? I mean, it's, we're gonna prove like a house sale and consume on town properties for everyone that comes in to make the request. But once again, I was under the impression that the museum was on private properties. In my understanding, was, the museum is about where the stage is, is about where the, 
I mean, that's the uh, parking lot there beside the uh, pharmacy. That is private property. Mm -hmm. And that's where, is that where, uh, that's the beer garden normally. Is that where it's proposed for the... Uh, I don't remember which one. Wilderness, I thought, wasn't it? Was it Wilderness? They had a no, one of them proposed doing it there. Right. But they're going to and change that whole format of that event, and that cook-off is going to be on up. South off Franklin, of Franklin Street, I think, is where yeah, they were talking so about. So there may be some... Transportation there. Uh, I, I, I really, truly can, can I can appreciate uh, clearly what Mr. Uh, Bishop and what Mr. Stipes uh, uh, are saying. Um, the uh, that's been a kind of a burr a lot of our saddles about you know, this, the consumption sale of alcohol on public property. And at first, I remember the very first time they ever brought it for us, I voted against him because of that because I didn't appreciate that, didn't like that. So I went down there. Not that I didn't appreciate what they were trying to do. That's a big endeavor. And thousands of people there. Uh, in fact, I think I actually ended up working one of the booths for them uh, to help them sell shirts and things. But uh, we got involved and we saw what it was about. Police did a fantastic job. They were there, not that they really were needed, but they were there present. And to make a long story short, um, the way I look at this is, is I kind of try to sparse this out and differentiate it. I know it's enjoyed by our citizens. I know it's, I know it's um, a good experience for them. I know it helps our downtown retailers. It brings people downtown. It drums up support downtown. We're always about trying to do something downtown. Um, and so, uh, and I'm not aware of a single incident, uh, one, not one. And before the when it was consumed on, we had to tell I know there were some times where it was problematic, and uh, and there were some issues. And not that, individual that's right. doing those. And that's not the case here with DCI. And um, so, uh, you know, although it is contentious, and I I, I understand, I can certainly can appreciate the councilmen who have concerns with it. And, and I think we all have our concerns, but. I, I can't find uh, myself not supporting it because I've been down there and I've not seen the problems, and I know it is supported by a ton of our citizens, and uh, that's that's why I have uh, I'm appreciative of DCI's efforts in that regard. How many events of this have you had, Dave? I think this would be number six. Number six of, of, food, of food truck rodeos. Um, we've had other, we other yeah. events downtown too, so that don't have alcohol, in the <laughs> like the movies in the park, right? And right. Uh, you know, and, and actually the sale of alcohol goes to support those other events, which is kind of fun. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll make a clarifying thought on this, Mr. Franz. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the, uh, uh, it seems like a simple request to make to have alcohol sales on private property. There's plenty of property, pro private property, I'm sure, that would be available for that type of event. Uh, not, to, not a political lesson, but it's not a democracy. This is a republic. People elect us to make decisions on their behalf, and the people that blow in my ear have concerns with it. And maybe I don't hear from the same people, but quite honestly, you know, that's uh, that's the people that talk to me about that. That's their concern. So that's why I'm expressing those concerns, because that's what I'm elected to do. Oh, I completely understand. That's why I want to understand the reason that's happening. And, and I still think it's a very simple request to say, and that to, if you're going to have alcohol sales, to have it on private property. That's very simple. There's private property abound, abounding down there. But enough said. You know, that's fine. I, mean, I yeah. look back at the private property. You have the Presbyterian Church lot. I don't think they're going to want to be involved in that. You have uh, the Ignite Academy, the old Main Street Baptist Church. I'm not sure they would approve of selling there. Uh, the Alcorn property behind the old Belk store is usually where most of the people park, so that could be a conflict. I'm just, I'm not sure, you know, you have behind McAdoo's, which is parking. Most of the other empty spots downtown are, are parking related that we need to make these events successful. So I, I'm, I'm inclined to, uh, I'm inclined to suggest that we vote uh, off, you know, Food truck radio closing the street. We can do that. If you want to vote for the uh, alcohol so, sales separately, then you know I'm, I'd be inclined to let it, to let us vote one and all for the for the whole event. But if it is council's desire to separate them, then who am I to argue with council? Most of the time. Wow. <laughs> and, and again, I mean, can you say that again? <laughs> Most of the time. <laughs> I, I do respect, again, all the viewpoints, and, and I, I do, I hear them, and I, I completely understand. But at this point, I, I would make a motion that we, uh, the street closures, uh, as requested by DCI for the food truck radio, uh, be approved. Are, we, are, are you separating or just? No. Okay, I'll uh, second that. 
have a motion and a second that we uh, include both within, since their original request was for the to close the streets. Have a motion and a second in discussion. I'll just mention something. It's the, all six events. Uh, I believe I've been to the majority of them, and you know we're all uh, councilmen are correct. Uh, there's there's a great show. I hate to say it, it's a show of force by the police down there, but there is a police present. Presence and I don't compare this to the tailgates that no. we, we no, saw come no. through here at all. I, these are a little bit more elegant and well attended, and more camaraderie uh, and meeting citizens. And we need more of these downtown. If you see how many people show up, it's uh, it almost will drive you away. There's so many people down there. So First couple of years. Um, yeah. I'll call a secondary. I do respect Mr. Stipes and uh, Sam when it comes to uh, their views about alcohol sales. I respect that, but I've supported these. And I'll support. I'll support more in the future. Uh, so, any further discussion? No, no, once again, I have nothing against the food truck radio because I think it's a great event. So let that be known. All right. Did it, Mr. Collins? You done? I just want to say that these guys work hard, hard to help the town, and they work at it up teen hours that they really do and I think we should try to help them out and I respect y'all's opinion and stuff but there's there hasn't been one problem ever that I know of and I, I think they're I should have the right to sell them. Chief you pretty much concern, concur with the lack of problem? I do. Thank you. You have any other okay. concerns Chief? And I don't have an over, overviewing concern. I mean, obviously, depending on what council approves, we'll adapt to that um, action plan and have the appropriate people in, in place to protect the event. Thanks, sir. Anything else? Madam Clerk? Yes, sir. And could I get the second on that? Corey, did you say? No, Henry second. Henry second. You, you made a motion. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Bishop? Yes, with concerns. Got a place for an asterisk on there, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. 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 <laughs> Councilman Collins? Aye. Councilman Hall? Aye. Councilman Showalter? Aye. Councilman Stipes? No. Thank you. That would be 4 1. Motion carries. Good luck, David. Thank you, John. <clears throat> Mr. Showalter, Aquatic Center logos. Is that yours? Uh, you, my name's on the next one, so I thought you were going to handle this one. Well, I can. All right. As soon as I get my computer turned on again. Terry, do we have this queued anywhere where we can show it up on? Yeah. I mean, I'll chime in, of course. I would expect no less, I would expect no less. We, uh, in your agenda packet, uh, there is a uh, a proposal from Ballpark Signs. We have Mr. Uh, Mr. Hubbard, uh, Show Walter, Mr. Collins, and myself, uh, and other interested citizens have met a couple of times <coughs> concerning a lack of branding that right. we see at the Aquatic Center. So we've met with Ballpark Signs, and they have given us a a pretty pretty good. Uh, uh, their ideas, and they are very professional with what they do. They've done a lot of things for us. Uh, they're asking, uh, they're, they're proposing to us $1,805 or $1,850. And you see a, a uh, we'll just walk down the slide, Barry, if you... Uh, you have to come there, guys. Uh, it'll be there a bit. The basic one is, the first one is, uh, while it is different than our blue and gold, uh, logo that we've gone to. Uh, their feeling was it matches the other Old Town logo that is in the uh, uh, the leisure pool area. So and it, it, it picks up the color schemes there. So they have recommended that we stay with the old logo for that for that building for that part of the building. Uh, it is 48 by 48 and is on a plexiglass backing. It's the replica of the one that stood in the aquatic center for years. Mm -hmm. The second one is a uh, a 50 inch wide 
blue and gold town logo that will stand will stay at the wall at the end of the walkway when you first come in. Back in. Is that right? Uh, yeah, absolutely. That's the one you when you walk in, you can see straight down the yeah, landing. The, the, the first entrance where people walk the, the on the lower end of the uh, the seating area. Uh, they recommended this one. They have also recommended uh, down in the uh, diving area a town logo to go between the Virginia Tech and the NCAA uh, logos that are there. They are also recommending, and we, we went back and forth on this. Uh, I like that. On the diving board. I, I like that. We, we, yeah. we talked about it, and I think Terry wanted to paint the town of Christiansburg down, and it was just. Uh, That'd be neat, too. We've been cost prohibitive. <laughs> and Terry is here to finish that. Yeah, and the way the letters would be. So, what they're doing is they're going to put a town logo on the diving platform just above the lifeguard stand. Uh, we feel it will be. Uh, it will. If nothing else, it just detracts from a dark gray slab of concrete that's sitting down there. So, I think it will look. We think it will look good. Um, the other is a, a list of double side of double sided town logos. Um, they're going to apply the the first one on the left is an eight inch decal, and it will be double sided, and it will go into the the doors, the glass panel on the doors as you go into and out of the seating areas. The 12 inch logo uh, will be applied to the uh, one of the windows, I believe Terry, we decided would be in the middle window of the workout facility. And the six, the six inch ones are going to be as we come in the door of the aquatic center on the side panels, is that correct? Okay, and I think they are also going to do a an etched glass look with the with the aquatic center logo on the main doors. Yes. So uh, we were looking, they were really excited. It's eighteen hundred and five dollars for that, and, and and I think that's what we were recommending. And that, Henry, we're going to take that out of tourism. Yes. We, there is money in the tourism budget to do this. And I believe Barry, you can. I, I brought it to council's attention so that. We can authorize Barry to do it, but Barry, you can do that on your own if it's anything under five thousand dollars, correct? But I'm sure you want to support of us since everywhere you turn. Yeah, you boys will hurry up and pass my slush fund. I'll do it myself. I don't think we. You don't need an official. We don't need to do official action on that. I just wanted, I guess, to see if council had any concerns. I know we all were invited. We met several times, and of course, you know, the, the first time we met, you, you find out a lot. And the ballpark did a great job. Uh, going all forward a lot of stuff with us and you know and you can guess anywhere you turn in there we were thinking about but the seal and then of course our second meeting we we uh thanks to terry and mark mark and, uh, <coughs> they brought us back to reality some other guests who were there yeah. uh kind of brought us back to reality of you know pinpointing you know these these areas that would get the most uh well most visual and, and put our brand or our logo out there Along with the Jane Tax, so well, I appreciate the efforts. Uh, I know at least two councilmen and, and the mayor were involved. Maybe there were others. I, I was not. But I appreciate the time y'all put into this, uh, and I certainly support your recommendation. And uh, if we if we need a vote on it, we need a vote, Mayor. Or the mayor, no. I'm General I'm just, no, I'll, I'll go like this. Got the thumbs up. <laughs> That's good. All right. Yeah, really good. Really good. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Now, the second, and to me, probably the more exciting of the two. I don't. We don't have a slide presentation yeah. on it. But Henry, I'm gonna let you. Uh, I guess during during our meetings, we, we sort of talk about you know the center is like, um, our visitation center, uh, our visitor center. So. Yeah, I've been thinking about it for a while, and, and we got to discuss how, you know, we have pictures already in the aquatic center of birds, birds and aquatic life, and that's really neat, and that's, you know, I go up there, my kids swim, and, you know, I, I get a chance to go up and down that hall, and that's where a lot of people hang out, a lot of, a lot of families, especially when they go and, you know, uh, I believe the commissary, there's always things for sale there, but there's always a lot of activity there, so we were just kind of throwing around what could we do, and 
you know, the town's looking to do a digital uh, photo library. Um, and we have Larry Middleton, who attended our last meeting, who has a huge photo library of the town. Um, any event that we have, he's usually there taking pictures. And of course, we welcome any anybody else, Marty, if you have pictures you'd like to submit. But the idea was, how can we present our town or do a photo album for all these people coming into these events? Because they are a captured audience. How can we give our story? And usually the best way to do it is with a photo. So we got to talking with Mark, and we brainstormed it, and we figured like a, uh, a wrap, it's like a wallpaper, but uh, to get just combine a lot of pictures, old, new pictures of the town, every aspect of the town that we can put in there. And of course, this is just the beginning of it to see what we can include. But to have, uh, I believe it's a two foot uh, wrap going down that hallway with those pictures. So, and there's a quote in there of it, but I think there's a lot more work to this. But what I was looking for is to, to get council's approval to move forward we can have a committee because you definitely want to choose the photos. We have the funds in tourism. I'd like to earmark that so we don't lose that since we do have those funds available and there are future uses for that, those funds coming up in next year's budget. But I just wanted to get your impressions on doing something like that at the Aquatic Center. Well, your statement, that is our de facto visitor center. Mm -hmm. I mean, if there's one place in town that has the highest visitation, of any place is that. So yeah, I would support that. Absolutely. I think your original question, Henry, and I don't see it in here, but in our emails, I think you said, you know, initially five hundred dollars to to get Larry started or to, to start working on it. And I think Mark quoted the final product to be about twenty seven hundred dollars. Yes. For the wrap. And the thing about these wraps, they're changeable and you can pull them off, you can put a new one on, you can do do whatever you want to do. So we could theoretically come up with two different sets of wall wraps and just rotate them out. But uh, it's an interesting concept. Terry, what do you think? Do you have any problem with this? I do not have any problems. I'm um, just excited to hear that you're approaching the ideas and that we'll be able to represent the town of Christiansburg in the Aquatic Center. And to imagine that wrap going down the hallway and how many people would really stand and look at it, if it's old fire trucks or the police departments from the old days, you know, all those kinds of pictures that be going down the hall. And I, I just think it's a wonderful asset to the town. The only picture I want to see in it other than, I want to see the fireworks photo that's out here on the wall. I think that's, that's an intriguing photo for everybody. So, you know, the cost of that project is more or less twenty seven and five about thirty two hundred dollars and it would probably come out of next year's it'll have to come out of next year's budget. We're not anywhere ready to go, but we'd like to earmark that, Ms. Tweedy, out of some type of tourism that we I know that I think you and I talked there may be some carryover tourism money that would normally go in the general fund, but we'd like to have something set out that we can move on this as quick as possible. And I think the idea is great. Great idea. And if, if you're not familiar with Ballpark Signs, they did our logo here, mm -hmm. and they did the wrap on the Aquatic Center vehicle. It gets noticed everywhere she goes. So that's that's a good that's a good thing. So we're gonna uh, we'll move on to that if that's okay. Do I still under five? Mm -hmm. Thumbs up. With is everybody good with that? Well, sure. All right, thank you. Very good. I like <coughs> thumbs up. Or do you go with it? Absolutely. I Overdue. Right. Sounds good. You know, who knows down the road we may want to extend, expand this into the, you know, the rec center and Hawker Rider and some of the other places that we. Well, I would anticipate court would take this to the rec, rec commission, just introduce it to them. If that be the we would just like <laughs> we would anticipate all that. Never. Yeah. Oh, for the rec center. Yeah. Right. And, and, and of course, Truman something Wilson. Out of yeah. Truman Wilson. Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot, I mean, there's a lot of ways you can go with it. Anywhere you can, you can positively, I think, display, um, again, scenes from the town through history. I, I don't, it's, 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 that's, that's all we have them out here on. That's what a lot of us get kind of stuck looking at sometimes. It just draws your attention. So. We're going to, we're going to, hopefully, if this turns out as well as I think it is, I'm going to sick them on town, on town hall <laughs> next year. So we may spurs her up a little bit downtown, down here. 
Okay. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Walker. Uh, next is a request by Montgomery Floyd Regional Library to have the $10 per event loudspeaker permit fee waived for the summer concerts on the lawn. Uh, this request is for this year and future years. And I believe there is right the next page down is a letter from Paul Austin, the director. Uh, I, I read the letter and I'll move that we, uh, we waive the $10 event uh, loudspeaker fee. Now and forever. Now and forever. Or until next year. Until then. Until it comes up again, okay. I guess I should say. <laughs> all right. Now, uh, I've got a motion. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? <clears throat> Only. No, no discussion. I don't have discussion. Yeah, I think these things are, are, are becoming quite well attended, mm -hmm. so that's another good thing. Maybe they'll let us stick well, we, 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 we support them with town monies. I feel like that we're supporting them and saying, give me 10 bucks back so we can get I just feel like we're just <coughs> exchanging back and forth. And okay. to me, uh, 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 and I say that with Dale in the audience. I know he had to submit twenty-five dollars to do something for the town, <laughs> but uh, I, I, yeah, I just feel like we're giving money and asking for them just to give it's it not, back. Not a problem. Yeah, that's exactly right. Not, not a concern. Well, I guess it is. Yes, I have no problem approving it this time, but for the future, I think once again we are tying future town council members' hands to this. And you're right, and that's I why I think each year it should be come full council. And, and I'll take a step back. Yeah, when I, when I was. I hate to say I was in jest about now and forever, but I'm looking at it here for this year, I should say. And my motion stands for the request as, as requested this year. And we'll entertain said motions in the future, or said Absolutely. requests in the future. I think that's fair that's and reasonable. Thank you. So are we amending the motion to be for this year, or did we do that? <clears throat> my motion is a fit for we are, as requested, to waive the $10 fee for the loudspeaker for McGovern Regional Library uh, for the for this year. That's what I would be. I'd be making my motion to approve that request. I, mean, I don't think we can actually do it for now and forever anyway. That's the calendar year. That's I'll second. Yeah. All right, I'll re-second. I got a motion and a second, and a re-motion and a re-second. Uh, Madam Clerk? Yes, sir. Councilman Bishop? Aye. Councilman Collins? Aye. Councilman Hall? Aye. Councilman Schillalter? Aye. Councilman Stipes? Aye. That would be 5 0. We have, we're getting ready to go into closed session. 7 8. 7 8. Oh, yes, we do. The, uh, the Dale Buckner event. Uh, and I'll make a motion, Mr. Mayor, that we approve the uh, street closure as presented by Mr. Buckner for August 27th of this year for 5 to 9 for the second annual or gospel downtown scene. Second. Motion and a second. Madam Clerk. Councilman Bishop? Aye. Councilman Collins? Aye. Councilman Hall? Aye. Councilman Showalter? Aye. Councilman Stipes? Aye. I don't think it's going to take I think we should be okay. All right. Uh, before we get into the closed session or talk about changing the agenda, Mr. Towns, do you have somebody you want to introduce to us? I do. Well, why don't we do that now? Our public relations director is Melissa Powell. She's been here a little over a week now. So, congratulations. in, doing a good job so far. She was a former, I don't know whether you saw the press, but she was a reporter for Reno Times and Handle Courts. Yes. She moved to Seattle to work with a PR firm out there. and decided they couldn't live outside of the state of Virginia, so they came back. We're very pleased to have her. Happy to be here. Welcome, Melissa. Thank you. Now, Mr. Hall, do you have something you want to discuss? Yeah, I, Mr. Mayor, if it, with, again, with all due respect to yourself and the council, I, I'm going to make a request that um, we have a long public hearing, I mean, the uh, closed meeting, and council reports, I'm, I'm going to make a request that we move council reports up to precede the closed meeting uh, this evening, if I may. Yeah. Got a motion? So moved. Second. We'll move them up, guys. Okay. We'll move them up. Uh, so we will go into council reports. We have a long meeting, so we don't need long right. council reports, possibly. Anyway. Uh, who's the lucky duck today? Mr. Shovel. Can we start with Mr. Collins? Sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> All right. I have two things. The first is on a bit of wraps. Uh, we can rep your office with the snapshots of us, the you know, council. I think that would look. We we don't want to scare people. 
Yeah, yeah. 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 Ye
from the interstate uh, going east towards Roanoke to the to the uh, town limits there, the eastern corporate limits at Wayside. We had a request to consider reducing the speed limit from 55 to 45 from Dunlap to the eastern corporate limits. Uh, we are going to get some traffic uh, crash data on that uh, before a final decision is made, but we're just for, uh, we don't, the street committee does not feel like that's, unless the crash data tells us something different, uh, we don't see a need to do, jump on that immediately. And then also an eastbound center turn lane being added on Roanoke Street for Open Door Baptist Church. Um, there were no downsides to uh, honoring their request to extend the left turn lane and make that a safer uh, egress movement from the flow of traffic there. So uh, you will notice uh, that will be handled strictly with paint striping. So uh, just want to bring those two items to your attention. Thank you. I just got a quick question that where the barrier is coming down to McDonald's, you're saying there's going to be, uh, other than those not bare and not, yeah, there's going to be, you'll see, you've noticed uh, the, the, it's only about four inches high, concrete kind of shaped and it comes up out of the ground, and okay. out of the pavement, pork chop islands that you see. Uh, to, it, 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 uh, he's going to pull out the screen. So yeah, you're getting it. Okay, he's going to uh, show you a picture. I think that's a great idea. I mean, nice. I've seen at least yes. on a couple of cases, oh, yes. uh, oh. some awesome obstacle course drivers trying to uh, get through there coming from the rec center and from McDonald's. They do a good job. They get through it pretty speed. Well, this yeah. is the next step towards the ultimate improvement there, which uh, that improvement is going to be something. That's done. That's there it is. Right there. Oh, one. So where you see the uh, Gold outline in gray is going to be concrete, uh, slightly raised out of the ground, and is this another step in keeping people from using that right turn lane, Mr. <laughs> Hall? Uh, you know, going on up. To Absolutely. The yeah, you'd have to go straight right there. <laughs> with yeah. the well, it says right turn only now, but this is going to be right, right. turn only with some teeth. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the regional commission. Um, their annual dinners tomorrow. I'm not going to ask who's going to go, but I'll be there. I'm sure Mike's going to be there as well. But uh, remember, it's at Draper Mercantile. It's pretty neat. They always uh, there's a citizen of the valley they award they they give an award to, and um, you know, there's, there's a few awards for people who champ, like champion of the valley as well. So if you get a moment and you register, come on out. Yeah, I know it's supposed to be raining wearing your raincoat, but you get to meet your uh, other municipality. Uh, uh, leaders there, and it's good to talk with them, and they're always interested in what's going on in Christiansburg. It's a good event. Yeah. Um, one thing we need to start to discuss is um, an additional member on the Regional Commission, uh, Mr. Weaver. Uh, of course, I don't anticipate he will return. He has been honored by the Regional Commission, um, but we, we should start looking at another member uh, to to go on most communities like Blacksburg, whatever you know. Yes, <clears throat> planning commission, similar to that nature. So I have some ideas, but I'm sure you, you do as well. Um, Sam's absolutely right about CBAC. They're looking for direction. If any of you have any ideas on uh, you know, where you would like to see the central business the district committee go forward, uh, we'd like to see them. Uh, of course, Sam and I are, are uh, the chairs or co-chairs on that com on that committee, so um, it's just not going to sit idle. I can assure you that. So, if you don't have any ideas, that's fine. But we will move forward with something uh, this year. So I thought we were doing a master plan. Um, that is in the budget right now. That's that's what I, Mr. Bishop, has sent out the email. Mm -hmm. But I thought that's what we were doing this year was a master plan. And with anything, I'm a little tentative by telling. Them, I haven't relayed that to them yet until we actually approve the budget. Well, so there's seventy five thousand in the proposed budget for that. Okay. Yeah, I would I mean that Mr. Bishop, I'd go ahead and respond to here publicly that that's I think that would be a very meaningful and concrete step is to do the master plan this year. So that would be my recommendation. And other than that, I just want to thank Wayne Nelson and Barry for getting back to me about the Dominos Park, uh, I don't know what you call it. Is a stream restoration. Stream restoration. A few of the community members out there uh, it's, it's for aesthetics and you've probably seen the emails but 
uh, it seems realistic, which came back with, and I appreciate that. And, and always in a timely manner, and I was able to contact them, and I believe you're sending out a letter as well. It's much appreciated. Thank you. Uh, I only got one more thing, and it's a question. Um, is uh, the property we, we bought uh, across from Waffle House. I know that um, uh, we, we're leasing the property up off Cambridge Street to the former owner. Yeah. But I know there's a sign out there. Uh, are we taking? Are, are we getting? Cross Waffle House part of the uh, contract to purchase. He leaves that there until we use the pro gotcha. property for some other reason. So they're advertising for his <coughs> development oh, company. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Oh, true. Mm -hmm. Okay. <coughs> Thank you. It's true. We didn't get the discount. It is. Mm -hmm. that's, that's good. Um, that's it. Okay. I I have uh, had two things. I only have one now since Henry and, and Henry and I have had a couple of emails back and forth about the regional commission and I have some ideas but that's something that I would like for us to uh, to fill as soon as possible. Henry, when does that commission meet? Last Thursday. Last Thursday, Thursday of the month, yep. Okay. Um, do you, anybody have any, any uh, and, and I think Mr. Weaver was an elected official. No, he came off of planning, didn't he? I can't remember what he was. He was, he was, he was, he was here forever. He was here during his formation since yeah. 1968. Yeah. Been and and I, think it would, I think it would be advantageous someone off of the uh, Planning Commission. Uh, I have an idea, and, and I, I would recommend that we don't put that in a public forum right now, but you, you asked for some ideas, and, and maybe we can we talk about some ideas. Right, right, right. Okay. All right. Sounds good. The other thing is Mrs. Carter's uh, term on the Economic Development uh, Authority. Is it the Authority of Commission or? Commission. Alliance. Alliance. Thank you. Uh, expires this month, and she has asked that we not reappoint her. So in the next couple of days, I'll be I'll be looking into some uh, economic uh, development authority appointments that do have to be an elected official. Does not have. Does, does they not prefer have, not to have. Prefer appointment. not to have an elected official. Yeah. How about an appointed one? Oh, never mind. I'll get to that later. But. Uh, so anyway, I, I'll be looking and, and run those those selections by you. You got to be looking for something to do, aren't you? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. A month after he retires, we'll be back begging to get on something. I know. I know. Anyway, all right. That's uh, any anything else from council report? Thank y'all for moving that up. Oh, you're very welcome. Show off, are you ready to read? <laughs> I'm, I'm a little confused. Do I read both? Or all three. Yes. All three? Uh, oh, well, there's, there's three separate. Three separate. Mm -hmm. the, the one off, read off of the uh, agenda, off separately. and then the one we had. Yeah. Okay. Yep. This? Yes. And then what's already on there? Well, the agenda first and that one, yeah. <clears throat> where are you going? Bear with me. <clears throat> the, uh, I need new glasses, so give me a second. I have a friend of the uh, Thanks. <laughs> uh, a request for a closed meeting under Virginia Code 2.2-37118A3 for the discussion and consideration of the acquisition of real property for a public purpose or of disposition of publicly held real property where discussion in an open meeting would adversely affect the bargaining position or negotiating strategy of the public body. And two, Virginia Code Section 2.2-3711A1 for the discussion, consideration, or interviews of prospective candidates for employment, assignment, appointment, promotion, performance, demotion, salaries, disciplining, or resignation of specific pub public officers appointees or employees of any public body. The first matter pertains to the disposition of property on Pepper's Ferry Road, and the second matter is for discussion regarding town manager position. <clears throat> All right, third item, uh, for consultation with legal counsel and briefing by staff members or consultants pertaining to actual or probable litigation where such consultation or briefing and open meeting would adversely affect the negotiating or litigating posture of the public body and consultation with legal counsel employed or retained by a public body regarding specific legal, legal matters requiring the provision of legal advice by such counsel. For the purposes of the, this subdivision, prob probable litigation means litigation that has been specifically threatened 
or on which the public body or its legal counsel has a responsibility or responsible uh, basis to believe will be commenced by or against a known party. Nothing in this subdivision shall be construed to permit the closure of a meeting merely because an attorney representing the public body is in attendance or is consulted on a matter. You don't that one by me. <laughs> I'll, I'll start from the beginning. Everybody get that? <laughs> this is reference to. So we, uh, I'll second that. Does we have a motion and a second to go into closed session? This is in reference to the uh, Park Street project that we're okay. working on. Okay. All right. Motion to second. Madam Clark? Yes, sir. I'm, can I get the second on that? that that's me. Just stop and stop. Just me. Councilman Bishop? Aye. Councilman Collins? Aye. Councilman Hall? Aye. Councilman Showalter? Aye. Councilman Stipes? Aye. It's fine, but we're going to take about two minutes. Council of the Town of Christburg meeting and closed meeting. In the best of each member's knowledge, discuss only public business matters lawfully exempted from open meeting requirements by Virginia law and only such matters as are identified in the resolution to enter into closed meeting. Second. 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 Motion and a second. Madam Clark? Yes, sir. Councilman Bishop? Aye. Councilman Collins? Aye. Councilman Hall? Aye. Councilman Showalter? Aye. Councilman Stipes? Aye. That's five. Thank you very much. Um, the we had three subjects to deal with on closed session tonight. Two are concerning pieces of property, and we're taking no action on those tonight. Uh, the second and the third matter is pertaining to the town manager position. And mayor and, and council at this time, uh, I'd like to make a motion to appoint. Mr. Steve Biggs as the next town manager of Christiansburg starting July 1st. I'll second, second this year. Got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Madam Clark? Yes, sir. Councilman Bishop? Aye. Councilman Collins? Aye. Councilman Hall? Aye. Councilman <coughs> Showalter? Aye. Councilman Stipes? Aye. Be five I also, and I know that he, he knows that he cannot vote, but I have a letter from Mr. Huppert uh, that just adds his support to the selection of Mr. Biggs as our town manager. Uh, Mr. Biggs is here tonight. Mr. Biggs, stand up and take a bow. <laughs> say I don't get a lot of those where I come from. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe my last one. <laughs> Stephen, any, any open comments or are you... Uh... You know, in, in watching the meeting tonight, it's really uh, great to see how engaged the, the council is and the issues and how passionate and, and how you've really studied the issues and, and, and you know, the, the, your prep and your engagement, I think, is unique. In what I'm seeing, and and I think that that's uh, something I'm going to look forward to working with you on. And the other thing I can say, you know, to the to the staff is in getting to know the council over the last uh, few weeks, the, the amount of support that you guys have uh, from your elected officials is also special. And I, I think there again, that just makes me want to be here all the more. Uh, you've got a great town and and a, and a great leadership in place. Thank you, Steve. Thanks, man. He'll be around for a minute or two afterwards. Nobody wants to say if you didn't get a chance. You know, it probably wasn't any big surprise who the guy out in the hallway was. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you had a moment, if you, if you like to talk to Steve for a minute, and I think Barry, he's going to be here in the morning some. Yes, we're gone. 10 o'clock, department heads are gone. Maybe. Okay. The ones that want to that hadn't already spent time with him. Right. Well, we don't discourage anybody from coming back. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> Sound Properties in the Industrial Park, uh, they had a, a deadline of having a certificate of occupancy of June, I believe it was. They're under construction and they'd like an extension until September. Uh, is that Shaw Property? No, this is uh, Sound, Sound Properties. Okay. Uh, Shaw Property will be bringing at some point to discuss that also. <clears throat> so I, I do need 
that's in their deed and a performance agreement. So okay. if you're agreeable with that, I wouldn't need to vote on that, please. To extend them until September. Like I say, they are, they are under construction, they just aren't finished yet. Mr. Hams, do you, is there an uh, expected construction completion date at this point? They, they're saying September. September. Um, upon recommendation for you is that we do this, well, then I will move that uh, we extend um, the previous deadline of June uh, till September for our sound properties in the uh, industrial complex, industrial center. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Have they had uh, <coughs> extensions before? Yes, this is one of the ones that we had to go back and and uh, push a little bit. But they were now years ago. Oh, what kind of company is it? They do sound systems and stuff. Sound stages. Sound stages. Okay. <coughs> Build us one. Uh, Do we have a motion and a second okay. on that? Yes. I, I have a motion on a second. Yes, sir. Second, motion and second, mm -hmm. Madam Clerk. Yes, sir. Councilman Bishop? Aye. Councilman Collins? Aye. Councilman Hall? Aye. Councilman Showalter? Aye. Councilman Stipes? Aye. Five out. Thank you. At your place, there's a summary of the budget changes from the draft and work session all. And I want to apologize for not being here last meeting. I was sleeping pretty good most of the time between the calls. But, uh, all the adjustments, the uh, Reduced BT bus service. Did send the email out. We think we're going to get a grant on that, but we won't know for a few more weeks to bring the funding back up to what it was. Uh, yeah, I guess question, for Mr. Helms. The, the, the grant now, we're talking about the BT bus service that we talked about before, obviously, yes. and the grant that would be uh, extinguished. Um, which we were going to have to make up that large difference. There's an additional grant. They've applied for some other another grant. And they, right. they, it looks good right now. They're, they're going to get it, but uh, would it would it cover the percentage that we would we'll go back to our former funding level? So to be really, yeah. mm -hmm. when did they find this out? Well, they've been working on it, but in the past probably a couple weeks ago they called. And this said, is some late breaking news. <clears> yeah, That's some, but. Didn't want to bank on it, and no, it again, and it's it's a little bit more positive. We're just now waiting for the Commonwealth Transportation Board has to vote on it. And so we would so still pay the no. two sixty sixty, okay. not, not five sixty, no. and potentially not have a reduction in service. That's exactly right. right. Well, we'll, we'll do some adjustments, but to make it better. But Tweets. Over, no yeah, right. reduction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Overall, overall, the service is not going to decrease. It might be right. different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. We, yeah. That's it's fantastic nice. news. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't think it's a coincidence. <laughs> I think you're right. That's <laughs> much better, guys. Exactly right. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> the uh, the second one is the grant revenue uh, addition from projects. This is uh, private funding for the light at uh, Falling Branch intersection from Sheeler, Shaw, Ash, one of the entities. Five ninety nine funds. The uh, legislature increased those a little bit, so that was an increase. We're not going to sell our generators. We were selling uh, capacity. If there was going to be a brownout or something, they could call and we'd turn our generators on the big ones at the sewer plant and uh, recreation center, and cut the power and all to aquatic center and then we got paid so much a month for being having that capability <clears throat> but uh, the EPA came out and said your generators aren't li licensed for air quality so you can't do it anymore <laughs> <laughs> so we, we're going to quit okay. and the moving the pipeline at Truman Wilson property 150000 in for that uh, Master plan for economic development. That's a downtown plan. Seventy-five thousand. Uh, some adjustments to rollover. Twenty-one thousand. And uh, project estimated to expand and rollover. We're well, we're adding one hundred ten thousand to paving. 
and 10,000 for a tourism grant that uh, we know about now and added expenditure to the tourism grant. So right now it's 9,700 to the good with these changes. That 150 for the added estimate for a pipeline move from Truman Wilson? Yes. Um, how much of a, we're in the ballpark, I take it, mm -hmm. but we had also had some discussion on some figures some, some somewhat substantially different from that amount. Oh, uh, I know we're one time they were talking like yeah. six, they said six figures, and they wouldn't say, well, it's 100,000 or 999,000, right. but this is a more firm number. They're just going to be working on a small section, and they don't think they're going to have to replace it, just go in and do some stuff to make it uh, where they are confident it's going to last. Uh, a long time, you're not to dig it up. And, right. and that's probably going to be a, again, a project that'll be, we won't know until we get it gets here, but it can yeah. get here anytime. Sometime this summer. June, July, right. Yeah. That's great news, yeah. yeah. Well, I still can't get over the beat. I'm sorry, I don't want to go back on that. But, I mean, we talked about that for an hour, mm -hmm. and then a work session on that for yeah. more than that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would say Shazam. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, great news. I think this part's going to happen eventually. Things keep falling into place. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask Wayne something real quick on this? I keep getting a lot of questions about uh, which streets are planning to be paved this year. Could you send us a list of what streets are going to be paved so we can tell people? Thanks. So we'll advertise the budget, send it out to the papers tomorrow with these changes in it for the public hearing at the next meeting. Well, do we want to get into a budget discussion? There's a couple of things I've, I've been thinking about. Do you want to do that tonight, Mike? Or Honestly, I don't think we can. It's not a right. It's not advertised. It's not advertised. I got a question: the adjusted projects estimated to expand and roll over added back to paving. What it, can you kind of expand on that a little bit better? Okay. With, with the new uh, revenues, uh, reducing the BT. What we were going to pay for BT? That's essentially an increase in the budget amount that we had, and then the the grant for the following branch intersection 150 <clears throat> we have about 320,000 330,000 with the 599 funds and we we'll spread those back out to add some well the pipeline add some back into the paving and uh, the master plan but the paving that was a big concern I know we we'd cut a lot out of paving so we're down budget. Budget. That, was a, that was a huge concern of yours mm -hmm. when we were going through just the finance committee. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's where I felt the best place to put it back in since we had $110,000 extra. Okay. Do we need any action on this? On I want to advertise it tomorrow. This way of going to the paper with these changes. Um, you can still act the public hearing. You can still adjust the budget again if you need to okay. or want to. Well, at the last meeting, uh, at the last meeting there, we had all agreed that the budget, we were comfortable with the budget except for one item. And it seems like that's fallen back into place. It's certainly all, any of our prerogative to bring that up again. But through some recent conversations, do we need to have another work session on the budget or not? Can we? Uh, I'd, I'd be. I'm just asking that now that we're convened right. right now. Do we need another work session? I would like to just have another discussion, even if it's the night of okay. the public hearing. So not a work session, just a discussion. Yeah. Okay. Prior to the meeting. Yeah. It'd be probably better to have it maybe after the public hearing. Well, we can do it then as then, well. Then you take consideration, you know, public hearing comments into consideration, and you'd be voting on it to, at the next meeting. So <clears throat> I'm, I'm fine with that. Okay. As long as we get one more shot at it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you want to set up time for that? Oh, so you're not going to, you're saying not after, immediately after the discussion here, but then maybe the next evening. You could have it at the end of the council meeting like did the other one. Or we had a, or, you know, a work session after. Only if you promise to keep the, the 
the agenda right. short that night, so oh, we, that, night. that doesn't mean anything. But well, so. you got the budget public hearings yeah. one thing. So. so you're talking about the 24th then? Okay. We're going to advertise the 24th. Mm -hmm. But on the 24th that evening, we're talking about the council. We'll have a more session. Yeah. That'd be I'm good either way. I, I mean, I really. I, I think it. Um, I'm fine having a discussion. I don't think any negative things of that at all. But I'll defer to you all as far as what, what you want to do. But if we could set a date tonight, that'd be. It'd be nice to go ahead and get that in stone. I'm hearing having a work session after town council meeting on the 24th. Is that what I'm understanding? With that. Yeah. That's probably better because we don't know whether there's something beforehand anyway. So, it, I agree. It would be good to get the. Uh, citizens comments out in the public hearing portion of it okay so it will be a work session afterwards so tuesday 24th that evening after council right there's also at your place uh some information on the uh, police department renovations the original estimate was 583 things looks like this as reynolds architect on the the original estimate was 583,000. We only budgeted that year um, 350,000 because we knew we couldn't complete it all that year. But the last page of the packet shows where we had it in the budget. Total project 583,000. Uh, that's down there under police department. So the last week, the last meeting. Some people thought the original estimate was only 300 some thousand. No, it wasn't. It was 583,000 when we started. Okay. It still went up a lot, but well, it wasn't. I said, well, what are we at? I've heard now? anything from 300 or something. 900 or something. Right, so. 936. We were right now, 864. Um, that's for the construction part. Okay, 1 million. <coughs> One million ninety-nine thousand. Yeah. One million ninety-nine thousand. One million ninety-nine thousand. It's next to last page. Yeah. That's bad. So, just to, just for my kind of poor man's math, and we're we're basically running about. Double. It double. Okay. And the, the other thing <clears throat> on the initial estimate, it didn't have engineering or architectural fees as part of that estimate. That was strictly construction, which we didn't I didn't pick up on back. What did that run about fifteen hundred thousand dollars for which should be about ten percent. About hundred thousand uh, dollars, hundred thousand dollars. Ten percent of his but, estimate, or what it actually is. <laughs> it should be about ten percent. <laughs> uh, his right now is it two hundred nine? Two oh, twenty plus percent. Um, no, the total for all engineering and architectural fees is one hundred and fifty-three thousand dollars. So the little fifteen percent. Mr. Gordon had quoted uh, me as my interest was in the contractor. It's not. I don't think it's the police department. I don't think it's the contractor. I think it's our uh, professional services. I don't mind saying that, and that's I'm going to get that straight. Uh, we should really think about that. I don't think it's our staff. I think it's the, the professional information we provide on to make decisions. That's it. Well, that's when it's completed, it's going to greatly enhance the police yeah. department's ability to work and to function and to provide a necessary service to the town. Uh, I just, you know, it's got a great end if we could just get it done. Okay. Nothing else to do. So we have water here because this is a little bit of a hard pill to swallow, yeah. but uh, yeah. we're doing it. <clears throat> and fresh from plant. Um, May 17th, they're having a stillborn speak 5K run on Huckleberry Trail. May 28th, downtown cruise in. June 18th, Mountain of Music Homecoming downtown. That's far as I go. Oh. 
Yeah, after yeah, that, yeah. you retired and don't matter. After that, <laughs> yeah. after that y'all heard it now. Yes. <clears throat> uh, I will remind, oh, go ahead, Charter. That's, uh, and the striping on independence, that'll be done when we do a rest of our striping after paving. We're talking about striping through the curve. Before the winter, yeah. until yeah, before school able. starts yeah. in August. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. That's all I have. Uh, I want to remind everybody, uh, may, uh, this coming Saturday, the Help Save the Next Girl group at Christopher High School is doing a swim-a-thon starting at 11, 11 to 2. They'll be raising funds to uh, go back to support their local operation. I understand that, that Jill and Dan Harrington will be here that okay. morning. So if you're out and about around 10.30 or 11 o'clock, it, uh, it should be a nice, nice event. With that, I'll just say, I, you know, I, 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 before you bring that gavel, I, I, I really, I, that's another example of, again, of the town of Christopher getting behind efforts and initiatives with our youth. And I just, I, I just, I think that's what a great investment that is. I, I just can't get enough of that when we're working with them. One of the things, let me real quick to say, Mr. Mayor, the next meeting, um, because I don't think we have a whole lot on our agenda, hint, hint. Yeah. Uh, but we are, I'm going to have, um, you all may remember Opal Squires from Child Protective Services in Pulaski County. Uh, Ms. Starks may know her. I'm going to have her come in. And there's an initiative across the state right now through Virginia Fatality Review and Edward Child is, um, is killed um, by a, um, if there's an abuse or neglect situation or if it's just an accidental situation. Fatality Review reviews these situations and tries to come up with parameters and best practices to prevent it. For instance, drowning is a big issue right now on the East Coast with children. And right now through this area, they're doing something called Safe Sleep, and that's with SIDS and proper ways for young parents who are new parents and, and don't quite understand and uh, maybe didn't have as, the best guidance for them as the way to properly even lay a child to sleep. And uh, they're going to do it. They're doing a real initiative across the state right now with that. It's all supported by the Virginia Department of Social Services. And so I was going to have her come in for just a couple of minutes. It's little door hangers you put on doors, and they're going all over the southwest Virginia doing that. I should have saw her across the state. So um, that's one thing I was going to have as far as someone coming in next time. But that's a two-minute talk, but what a great uh, – a message, and again, that's why I love the fact that um, we'll have that on video for people to review. That's all I have. Thank you. Mayor, I know you want to leave, but I just want to touch mm -hmm. on the Save the Next Girl. The CHS chapter of this organization Huge. is highly involved. Huge. And I've seen them at soccer games. Um, they're involved in uh, after school activities. And if anybody in here has an opportunity, stop by. I know my kids are swimming. I'm not. I'm going to be enjoying watching them swim. It hurts too much for me to get in there and go at it. But um, if you got a chance, stop by. Bring your check. Bring your check, but both. Donate something to them because they are working. Uh, mm -hmm. Actively <coughs> for the organization. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, Terry Ballpark Signs did the did the logo for this thing. Correct. And they donated so many of them to us. Swim for the next girl. I haven't received those, so I'm not sure. If okay, okay. but they but they they've been involved in it also. So there you go. One last thing. <laughs> Another follow-up comment on our appointment of Mr. Biggs as our fourth town manager. Yes. Uh, I want to say, make another statement. Uh, and Steve Huffer's not here tonight, but I'll use him as an example. We had a tremendous support from Springstead Associates. Brought us 44 applications from 19 states. Uh, whittled it down to 11. This council narrowed it down to five, and we had very five. We had five very strong candidates that could have capably run this town. So the five candidates that ever were interviewed should take that as a compliment, and maybe perhaps even more so Mr. Biggs to, to know that the competition was stiff. And, you know, we had, they, Springstead did a great job, and the town has a great future that we're looking at, but all five candidates that we had were strong and could have run this town very well. So thank you. I'm just waiting. <laughs> 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 That's what